Hey everybody, welcome into Domesticated Gamblers, Three Dads with our favorite picks of the day. Coming to you each and every weekday here on YouTube. It's February 7th, 2023. I'm Eric with my buddies, Sean and Tito. Do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. That's a really easy way to help out the show. Uh, we can chat with you in the comments on our videos too. So feel free to get involved with the show there and hit that notification bell as well. So you can get our videos as soon as we drop them. You can also follow us on Twitter at Gambling Dads. All right, I'm getting right into it because I am pissed off about this Milwaukee head coach who doesn't know how to foul when you're up by three and there's less than five seconds to go in the game. This idiot head coach doesn't tell his team to foul. There's one second left, and they give up an open look for a three to a Green Bay player. He knocks it down to send the game to overtime. Then – Milwaukee's up by one with a few seconds to go in OT. <laughs> and the same kid has the ball for Green Bay. Do they double team him? No, of course they don't. He shakes and bakes. He knocks down a J. Milwaukee loses. Green Bay wins to improve their record to a to a healthy three and twenty-two on the year. And I lose my three-team money line parlay. And I'm tired of it. Yes. I mean. How can you hold these guys accountable? What I don't even know what conference Green Bay or Milwaukee are even Horizon. in. I mean, Horizon Horizon. League. I mean, come on. That's a degenerate game at play. That's exactly why you don't follow the sharp shooting Eric. You follow Tito. Tito has another two, three-star play class, cash last night. Everyone wants to complain about Tito and his freaking Kansas Jayhawk takes. And look. But you, you had one Tito. lose as well. You had one lose as well. One and one. Let's one not one talk about that. Let's not time. talk about that. That wasn't a real play. I'm, I'm only talking about top 25 play. I kind of went outside the norm. I went outside my little boundaries. I I, I cost myself. I understand. I sharp I even, you, baby. I sharp you. I mean, how can you sharp shoot me? Northern Colorado. I, I should have been all over Northern Colorado once you guys came after me. And you know what? The sharps got it. They were up like they were down like 17 with like three minutes to go in the first half. I look at the box score because I'm like, this game is over with. They lost by what was it? It was like 35 fucking points. What are you doing? Say Weber State, Weber State, whatever you want to call it. I mean, these guys don't know how to play either, Eric. That coach didn't have them ready to go. I mean, what was it? Northern Colorado has only won like two or three games. I'm with you on these coaches not realizing how to coach their teams, whether they're in, in at home or away. But this is ridiculous. I'm staying away from Division One basketball unless it's top 25 action. Mark it down now. I saw it was uh, Weber State's fourth consecutive road game. I think the legs were a little bit wobbly. They're in the altitude in Colorado. Uh, and we didn't, we didn't sharpshoot you on that one, Tito. Sean and I already had that play picked out. At least yeah. I know I did. And yeah. you you mentioned Weber State, and my eyes about came out of my head. I'm like, oh, my God, this is my opportunity to make up some ground. So, that, you know. That, that play was the typical Joe Public saw the record, and it was just the records didn't matter in that game. Yep. Uh, they it saw was, the, you know, this team had eight wins. The other team had 12. Oh, this is easy pick-ins. And the Sharps were all over that one. And another good part about it, it was the degenerate special. It was the 10 p.m. Central time start last night it was the only game going on then so all the people that lost their ass all day at the tables out in vegas oh, oh man this northern colorado team sucks i'm gonna hop on weaver and got their yeah. ass handed to them within like the first five minutes of the game now i don't get me wrong this milwaukee thing last night that's got me all fired up remember our commandment we don't complain about bad beats on the show this was not a bad beat I, anytime you have a three-team money line parlay you have no right to complain about a bad beat but i am going to complain about an idiot coach that doesn't understand that if you're up three and there's less than five seconds to go, you have to foul. No, but so don't. many things have to go wrong for the game to go into to overtime even if you foul, let alone lose the game. I, I know some coaches say like, oh, I, I don't want the possibility that my team can lose the game in regulation if we foul up three. You know how many things have to go wrong for you to lose in regulation? Uh, the kid has to make the first free throw, right? Then he has to successfully miss the second free throw, which isn't easy to do. Like people just assume like, oh, he's just going to miss it. But like how many times you see a guy try to miss it on purpose and he clangs it off the backboard, you know, without even hitting the rim. That happens a lot. And even, even if he can miss the second free throw, they have to get the rebound. They have to tip it out. 
They have to knock down a shot to tie you or knock down a three to beat you in regulation. It's just so unlikely that that happens. It's just crazy to me that these coaches do not follow free late, especially like the kid had a good look. It's not like it was this, this contested, really I difficult thought- three. It was just terrible, terrible. No, it's that, no, that, that, that's, you're essentially talking about moving more analytics into the game itself. No, it's, it's common really, sense. It's common no, it's sense. Analytics. It's analytical talking about how there's the, the risk and reward is, is, is far greater, right? There's no risk and reward. There's a defensive breakdown. That's not the coach's fault. It's not the coach's fault that there was a defensive breakdown. That's the players. There's again another millennial talking about how it's always the coach's fault. It's the player's fault for not breaking down, for not playing defense the right way. Too many analytics about, oh, look at the numbers. The numbers say that it's, it's far greater to have make a first free throw and then miss the second free throw, have it tipped out. That's not going to happen. You don't know that it's not going to happen. You got to play the game how it is. You you've stopped the team thus far. You're up three points thus far. Stick to your strategy. You don't need to do this. Are you are you being hot take guy right now? Or do you really no, believe this? I truly believe that. It depends on the it depends on the situation. And obviously, they were shutting down the other team for a while, and they they had a defensive breakdown. They literally legitimately just had a defensive breakdown. It happens. It's college gotta, basketball. It happened again in overtime. He didn't coach these kids up. The same guy that knocks down the three has the ball uh, down one with less than five seconds to go. They don't. This guy was their go-to guy all game. They don't double team him. They just let him do a little one-on-one move. He he just crosses over some dude, pops a J, nails it. They lose. Milwaukee That's does skill. Green Bay That's has skill. three wins on the season. It's terrible, terrible coaching. Sean, will you will you be the deciding vote in this? If your team is up three late, do you want them to foul or do you want them to play it out? Well, before I get into that, here's what I heard. A uh, little little birdie told me that someone knew you had a three-team parlay. They didn't foul on purpose. <laughs> um, I'm with Eric on this one. You put them at the line for two. Um, it just makes all the sense in the world. Put them at the line. You're in the ball back. Make them foul you. Here we go. Hit your free throw. Game's over. Um, that's where I'm at as well. If you're, you know, why not foul them? They can't score three on the, the free throw line. They can't. It extends the game a little bit longer. Maybe the team didn't. Maybe there was foul trouble. I don't know the all the scenarios of all the situation of the game itself. But there's too many scenarios where it doesn't make too. It doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things. Like what, what? If they're, like if they're less than five seconds left, right? You foul, then they make one free throw, or they make both free throws. Then what happens, right? Then they okay. foul again. They extend the game a little bit longer. One I mean. That, that's what I don't agree with. I don't agree with fouling like if there's like nine or ten seconds left in that situation. But if it's under five, and even if they make both free throws, if they decide to make both free free throws, they or free throws, Tito. I forgot it's not throws in the show, it's free throws. They they hit both, they cut it to one. Okay, you inbound the ball, you get fouled. Uh, so now you're going on the line with a one-point lead with less than five seconds left. There's a lot, they're they're probably having to heave up a half-court shot or you know or just inside the half court line. I, I I get what you're saying. Like, Oh, it's analytics. But to me, that's just common sense. Like one, if one thing goes wrong, the guy hits a three, you're going to OT. Uh, there's several things that have to go wrong that had to make the game go to OT or lose in regulation. If you fall, it's just, to me, that's just, well, what sense. if the guy hit the three and got fouled? game? Well, over. that's the thing. You got to be smart about it. You don't follow when he gets close to shooting position. Like they were, they cross half court. They had ample opportunity to fall. Well, Okay, but you got to be smart about it, right? They weren't smart about not covering the right guy. So how can you trust the players to be smart enough not to foul when the guy is in the motion of throwing throwing up a three pointer? I don't trust the coach. This guy clearly doesn't know what he's doing. He had two opportunities to shut this guy down and win the game and cash my three team money line parlay because KU got it done, Alcorn got it done, Milwaukee. I just threw in there to get it down from like minus one forty five to minus one twenty five, even though they were favored by like a billion. And they're the team that Fs it up for me. I'm tired of it. Well, we can tell it's Tuesday here on the show. Everyone's feeling a little cranky. We're back to our work week. You know, here we go. I told you, folks, I told everyone yesterday, this was the, the streak where the, the, the parlay was going to end. I told you guys yesterday, ride the Tito train, get on the Tito train. All my picks come through. All of them are legitimate. Don't listen to Eric and his three team parlays anymore. I was the only one who cashed last night, eighty bucks. So we'll yep. take it. We'll it was it. it was a pretty at the end of the day. It was it was a lot of excitement last night, but it was pretty blah. I think Sean, you won eighty bucks. I think Tito, you dropped thirty, and I dropped like thirty five. So it's kind of like a you know 
move on to the next day type thing. But uh, it, this is really like, I know I'm like angry about it and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I am definitely playing it up more, more so than I should be, but that's, it's nights like that. I love gambling. I just watched hoops for like, my kid went to bed. I watched one episode of better call Saul, which is my God, that show is incredible. I'm on season five. I know I'm way behind for most people now, but then I flipped on the second half of the KU game that got sweaty down the stretch for the number. I don't know if you guys saw that. I think Texas at one point uh, was down seven with the ball. Uh, right. So a three gets it to four. That was with about 30 seconds to go or, so, or something like that. And then flipped on Northern Colorado. I was able to go to bed. Um, you know, it's not, not having to watch that whole game. Thank God. Uh, was watching the Milwaukee game on my phone while watching Better Call Saul. I about threw it across the room and they didn't follow up three. And then threw it across the other way, other side of the room when the guy hit the shot in overtime. But that's gambling, man. I lost 35 bucks last night and had a hell of a time. That, that's what I love about this, you know? I mean, yeah, that's the good point that I even said yesterday, right? I mean, my love for college basketball has kind of been re- rekindled because of watching these games and betting on these games and talking hoops and looking at different spreads and looking at different stats. And so, you know, you guys came over the top and sharp shot me last night, which was smart, which was genius because you guys called it, right? I just looked at the, I looked at the records. I looked at the last five games. It was like, oh, this is an automatic play. We're going to, it's even Northern Colorado is going down. So I didn't read too much into the four away games and playing in Colorado. So kudos to you for sharp shooting me there. And it won't happen again, baby. It's all top 25 action for Tito moving forward until we get to the tournament. You're learning lessons, Tito. I, I think that's a good thing. Well, if, if anyone else has anything else to chime in on last night, if not, Sean, I think we can get to our question of the day whenever you're ready. I just want to say these officials in this KU game, I mean, they were just – they weren't calling anything down low. Uh, the announcers were talking about it. It was crazy. I just was watching guys get mugged, no call. KU goes down, they're blowing whistles. It's just – they got it within one possession with uh, about four and a half, five minutes ago. Texas had a ball. They could have took the lead. They threw up a three. It was way offline. The crowd's chanting air ball, air ball. Next thing I know, it's a 10-point game within two minutes. It's crazy. Um, yeah, KU has the biggest home court advantage, maybe in all of sports, but de- definitely in college basketball, it feels like to me. It's like they get that home cooking. They- they're like you, Sean, with the red noodle, tapping the referee. Yeah. It's time to-, time to give a call just like you did for your son at the rest. A little of- early, a little early, yeah. You got to do it. You got a little home cooking, never hurt nobody. <laughs> Tito, any CYC action this week, or does that not happen until the weekend? There's a, there's there's some CYC action Saturday. Not, nothing Friday night, so um, I'll have I'll have an update for everyone on Thursday. I know we have a special guest hopefully coming on on Friday, so I'll have some CYC plays on a on 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 Thursday show. You know, I I, I did get I did have some text message chain from a few other domesticated gamblers from the CYC action talking about some strategies in regards to high school basketball, um, somebody playing priory and the, the defensive team didn't have anyone at the free throw line rebounding. They had everyone back. Um, and so that was a hot topic last night in regards to strategy and making sure that the big men aren't running down the court up and down. So I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on having the, having the free throws, having the defensive team not be on the free throw line in case there's a missed free throw. That seems like kind of analytical basketball that is ruining the game just like it is in baseball. So um, you gotta have your free, you gotta have your free throw players, you know, right there on the block for rebounding, for offensive rebounding, for defensive rebounding. And I, I don't understand it. I could see a situation where you're shorthanded, you don't have a lot of bench players and you wanna, you know, make sure these guys aren't getting winded. So you leave them down there for one game. You know, say we got seven players, we only got two on the bench. Maybe then I could see it, but overall, that's not a good strategy. Come on, get your legs going. Quit being wussies. Run down the court. Warm up the legs. Come on, let's go. You, I totally agree. You need better conditioning. Where is the strength and conditioning coach at this high school? These kids I are mean, young. They're in the prime of their lives. They can r- run like gazelles. Get them out there. I mean, Let them run. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's Priory. You know they have a strength and conditioning coach. Priory, for those people that are outside St. Louis, one of the more – established one of the more elite you know high school high schools in the area that you you gotta pay like forty thousand dollars a year for to go to high school ridiculous you know that's 
sidebar. Yeah. But I know I'm with you guys. You got to start sprinting. You got to start running up and down the court. I don't even understand how coaches in basketball, even CYC, like on made baskets, the rules are you can't press until the last two minutes unless it's the A League, right? But why do you not press the entire time, even on a missed basket? Why not put the pressure right on your players, right on the guards right away? I don't understand that philosophy. I know that next year, third graders for SUCA, we're going to be pressing the entire time. I don't care if it's a made basket or not. You're pressing. You're showing up. You're running sprints. We're firing up and down. We're creating turnovers. It's going to be 60 minutes of hell for 60, for 40 minutes in CYC next year, baby. I tell you what, SJ's going to love that because he can run, boy. He runs with the best of them all day, and I'm ready for that. Run them, baby. I think we. I think right now, practice, you should have these kids running a little more. I don't, but I, I get. I don't understand that thought process. Even when Mizzou had the had the with Mike Anderson as the coach, they didn't press unless there was a made basket. What What's the process behind that, Eric? Do you have any idea why that why they do it on made baskets instead of on non made baskets? You should just be pushing up the entire time. I think the logic of it is on a missed basket or on a missed shot, you're you can be disorganized defensively if the other team gets the rebound, and then if you try and set up your press by that time, the team's already streaking down the other end of the floor. I, I think I'm no basketball coach coaching expert, but I think that's the reasoning behind it. But it's no, I, but what I'm talking about is not setting up like a press, just picking up full court, just pick up full court, just man to man defense. Play your player the entire court. Don't yeah. wait. Don't, you know, it doesn't have to be some sort of trap or some sort of like mechanism to where you're wanting the ball to go to one side. Mm-hmm. Just pick your players up the entire way. And then if they make it, come down, set up your defense, and then go from there. That's what, uh-huh. that's what, and anyone that wants to coach against me next year, third grade, the games of the world, the Our Lady of Lords, the St. Rayfields, you know my strategy. You beat it, baby. I'm telling you what it's going to be, but you don't have the horses to play with me, baby. I remember uh, CYC basketball, and he was one of my best friends for a long time. His name was Rob Kelly. And Rob was not a great athlete, but, man, he was a feisty, feisty honey badger on defense playing basketball. And because, like, he, so he, like, he knew he wasn't going to score, right, when he was out there. And so what he would do is exactly what you're talking about, Tito. As soon as he got out there, he picked up his man. It was like in his face, like nose to nose. It is wherever that kid ran, Rob right, ran right after him, which is up in his face the whole time. It was incredible. If we had a de- defensive player of the year for, for our uh, conference and CYC, uh, B League, whatever the hell we were in, uh, I think he might have won it. Because that's the thing, like sometimes when you really think about it in grade school basketball, these kids, they don't, I don't think you mentioned this before, Tito, you don't want kids up in your grill. I mean, I remember I was a point guard, like until I hit puberty and then I beefed out a little bit and then I played power forward, but I was the point guard for the for first few years of my career. And if any time I would, you know, the ball was inbounded to me and the team had backed off and I could just bring it up the floor. I'm like, Oh God. But then like, if they're pressing, I'm like, Oh shit. Like, God damn it. Like, this is going to be hell the entire game. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about, man. I think you're all over it. That's the right way to coach these kids. Yeah, that's how I played defense. I was in your face, and I was going to chirp at you. Uh, you know, I grew up in South City. I grew up on some dirty playgrounds playing ball, and I chirped, and I would be in your face. And it's funny. I tell SJ out there when we're shooting, I say, now when you're on defense against somebody, let him know. Say, I'm going to be here all day. All day, me and you. Let's go. And, you know, that might work out for him. It might not. I don't know. But I think that's the right way to go about it is uh, – let your defender, know, you know, let the other guy know, I'm here. I'm not going to stop all game until that we hit uh, triple zeros. I'm on you all game. So I, I, was, I love No it. mercy. No mercy. I, I want the reputation to be set right away, third grade. If we're playing points and they're keeping score, the other team is going to know, hey, when you play SCCA, you're playing 40 minutes and you're, you're going to be running. You're going to have people in your face. We're going to have the – we're going to have the freaking horses – Come up and down, baby, and that's how it's going to be. I think the boys would like it. I think our boys will like it. It'll get them to understand when someone presses. Because you're right, Eric. Whenever someone presses, you're like, "Oh fuck!" Like, well, the, the mind goes crazy, and you don't. They don't know how to handle it. So if our boys get accustomed now to hey, pressure, 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 they're going to be able to handle it that much better. So I agree. 
basketball Hello. director, president of the Act Association. You know my strategy now. Don't don't cock block me next year when I'm running this type of defense. Let me do it. And Tito, I'm your guy for strength and conditioning with these boys. I will run them and I'll make them do squats and I'll get them calf muscles looking beautiful. <laughs> Let's not talk about calf muscles yeah. and nine year old little boys. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on from that. I think it's a good good time to segue. Uh yeah. your great discussion, boys. Man, I could talk about grade school sports all day. I feel like we found like our, our niche here on the yeah. show on domesticated gamblers. If you are enjoying the show, uh make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our uh to our show as well. That'll be really helpful to help us grow. And uh, Sean, if you have it, I think we're ready for the question of the day. What do you got? So I know we all sipped a little bit of brandy. We had a few beers. We had some cocktails at the uh, Sweet 16, 16 party. Yeah, Sweet 16 party. Uh, so it got me thinking today, back in the day when you were super hungover, what was your three hangover, takeout, or slash delivery options? So, I mean, you're super hungover. You don't want to leave the couch. Oh, yeah. You can't even leave the couch. What What was your three go-tos? Oh, man, for me, I, I still love it. I love, um, man, deep dish, pepperoni, Pizza Hut pizza. Absolutely love it. Um, you know, they got that. Or it's not deep dish. It's that pan. It's that pan pizza, that crust with that, yeah. with that, with those seasonings and the little mold with skixes. Oh, I just love it. I love whatever they put on the crust is dynamite the breadsticks are dynamite from pizza Hut. i just i can't go on and on about that and then i think i'm gonna go into the you know it's it's all pizza for me daddy you know you're talking about you know pizza hut papa john's they got the garlic parmesan breadsticks that i'm a big you're hung over this is what you're going for huh? oh this is all what i'm going for right here all just dripping that fucking all those um all that grease just right into my mouth right into that boy mouth of mine oh yeah um and so yeah i think that's that's my play those are my plays you know good breadsticks and nice greasy pizza either from papa john's or from pizza hut so you're carving up you're just putting more carbs oh, i'm just in loading there. it up daddy oh god just all over myself and and if, hopefully i'll have a little bit more for later on after i get after it a little bit later on that night and i can come home to heat up some more pizza well i have a i have a few that come to mind i was just trying to to teleport my mind back to my days at st louis university uh did not drink a lot in high school so when i got to college i i had a lot to figure out when it came to the drinking and how much to have and, and what you could have um but i think back of like what would i do on like a sunday morning after a night of drinking so i have three that come to mind one and tito i don't know if you've been here this is this is in your neck of the woods now down in south city have you ever been to Uncle Bill's Pancake House? Oh, yeah, we, yeah. We, we hit up Uncle Bill's a couple of times, me, you, and Schrader a couple of times after a long night of drinking. So, yeah. absolutely great call on Uncle Bill's. Effing Fantastic phenomenal. Get, get, a, get a stack of flapjacks and just <laughs> yeah. sop them up with some butter and some syrup and just go oh, to town. Yeah. That oh. was a good way to kick off a Sunday morning. Another one, if I just wanted something quick, uh, I would go to the Hardee's at 40 in Hampton. And I would drive through and get Hardy's breakfast, which still to this day as a 40 year old man, if it's like a Sunday morning and I woke up and I don't feel well, I'm going to Hardy. The closest one is like 141 in Big Ben. But I'm going to Hardy's and I'm getting me a sausage and egg biscuit with a hash brown. Oh my God, it's so okay. good. The, the Hardy's, last... Hardy's biscuits are underrated. Those are always fre made fresh and always really, really just delightful. The biscuits in particular, like McDonald's breakfast, I think is fine. Like the, yeah. the egg McMuffin, it, it's, it's fine. Okay. It's it okay. gets the, it checks the box. It gets the job done. But if you really want a good fast food breakfast, it's Hardee's ten times ten times out of ten. Chick Fil A has got a great breakfast. Oh, yes, on my travel day, going to all the all day uh, trip to Mexico with a five hour layover at uh, Houston or wherever the hell we were, uh, they had a Chick Fil A in the uh, in the airport. And they had those little chicky biscuits, the, the little uh, the little mini chicken biscuits. Those were outstanding. But my other go-to in college, like if I didn't want to get in my car and drive somewhere, uh, the, it, my dorm room had a you know a food hall or food court or whatever. Bosco sticks. Oh, yeah. Bosco st cheese filled breadsticks. My God, if you want to gain some weight, just eat a bunch of Bosco sticks. <laughs> and that I did. Uh, so if I had to pick three off the top of my head, those are the three that I would uh, narrow it down to. What, what do you think, Sean? 
Uh, so for me, it was a lot of times I couldn't even get off the couch. So I'm making a phone call to the Chinese place around the corner, whatever that is. Give me the Chinese food. Give me the, give me the sodium. Give it to me. Give me the carbs. Uh, I mean, just eat so much Chinese food when I've been hungover. Just like a madman. It's crazy. Egg rolls. Oh yeah, I love it. Um, so going back to what you talked about, Uncle Bill's. There was a lot of Waffle Houses. Uh, we yeah. go to Waffle House pretty buzzed up a lot uh you know that how you ended the night around st louis but um then my number two i'd have to go to emo's pizza have that delivered to the house for sure just some grease emo's pizza a lot of times i'd have them deliver the two liter of soda with it and i'm just slamming a two liter soda and emo's pizza i mean just getting after it i loved it And then uh, number three, if I could drive, I would always go to Taco Bell. Give me some mm. quesadillas, the mm. uh, the crunchy cinnamons. Oh man, I would eat them up. So and then always the Dr Pepper from uh, Taco Bell. They had the best Dr Pepper. Man, I think we could get Dr Pepper to sponsor the show at this point. A lot of Dr yeah. Pepper mentions on domesticated gamblers. I can't drink it now. It's too it's too much syrup for me. Oh man, so great, so delightful. No, we we hit up Jack in the Box quite a bit too. I remember you would always get like eighteen tacos too, the two tacos for ninety nine cents. <laughs> Friday. He so would, Give me all the tacos you got back there. Tito, oh. I I got a story for you, Tito. With uh, and you, Tito and Jack in the Box were were a match made in heaven back in Tito's early twenties. So there was one night. I think you know what I'm going to say, Tito. I was driving you home from somewhere after night out oh yeah because it was it was the one right by uh, matthew's field close to your house and it's like you know probably around midnight from the jack in the box drive through i'm like tito you know i was getting ready to ask you tito what do you want and you started blah, 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 blah. and i'm like wait what and you're like two tacos and a chicken sandwich a burger blah 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 439 439 so i go i, I repeat the order and they said, that'll be 439, pull up to the window. <laughs> he knew exactly what that shit cost. It was amazing. He used to get a double cheeseburger meal with a large, extra large Dr. Pepper and an extra double cheeseburger. That was the order. Summer 11, baby. The curly oh, f- you it's remember amazing. that, right, Tito? Oh, absolutely. Johnny D has the same story. We were down in Cape Girardeau one day. He must have waited. I passed out in the in the passenger side of the car. Johnny D must have waited in line for about 45 minutes. We were, It was wrapped around down in Cape Girardeau when he went to SEMO. And I, I woke up, gave him the order, said it's going to be this this amount. I forget what the amount was now, but gave him the same order. Johnny D will, will tell you the same story. Oh man! This one time, one time I was driving to go, and we stopped at Denny's, and he fell asleep in the booth. And then his food showed up, and he woke up and ate it. <laughs> then he went back to bed. Speaking of Johnny D, that guy is a saint. I remember. Do you guys remember there was a stretch where there were no Wendy's in the greater St. Louis area? Yeah, yeah. Matt D. What a disaster that was! And I sometimes I just wanted a plain double stack. I wanted my plain double stack for a buck. Get a little chocolate frosty. And I don't remember the circumstances of this, but there was one night that we were with Johnny D and I was complaining how I just really, really wanted Wendy's. He goes, there's one in Herculaneum. I could drive you there right now. Yes. And I'm like, you don't have to do that, but yeah, let's do that. So <laughs> he, we hopped in the car. He drove me down to Herculaneum and we drove through Wendy's at about 1030 at night. And uh, that, that Johnny D is an absolute uh, treasure of a man, treasure of a man. One time I was super hungover and, I just had to cut my grass. And I remember texting him. I was like, man, I just can't get out of bed today. The grass. Next thing I know, here he is at my house cutting the grass. Is that right? Unbelievable. A long, long time ago. I mean, I was early 20s, you know, 22 or something. Oh, here, he, I'm, who's got the mower going? It's John. He's out there. <laughs> just unbelievable guy. Unbelievable. Tremendous guy. Just yeah. the best, man. Just the best. I think, we, I don't know if he watches the show. Uh, but I, I feel like we need to get him on. He's a, John's a hell of a storyteller, oh, yeah. hell of a joke teller. I think we got to get him on as a fan of the week one of these times. I might have reached out to him. If, if he watches this, he'll be happy to. Johnny, what happened to Bill America? Sorry. That's all right. I'll, I'll get it. Now I'm going to send this clip to him. All right, before we get to our picks and our full recap of last night, uh, again, if you want to be like the tagger in the South City Zebra, get involved with the show. A reminder that you can be our fan of the week. 
where we'll have one fan on the show with us every Friday. So if you want to be our next fan of the week, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, then post a comment on this video saying you want to be our fan of the week and why. We'll choose one person each week, and that person can come on the show on Friday. We'll hang out, and then our fan will choose one of us to go against. They each make three picks for the weekend, and if our fan of the week beats the host, they will win a prize. Uh, this week it is a $10 gift card. So again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, post a comment on this video saying you want to be our fan of the week and why, and you can join us here on the show on an upcoming Friday. All right, guys, uh, let's get to the picks. Uh, Sean, recapping last night, you have the honors after your, your fat $80 profit. But, hey, man, money's money. Uh, winning night, take that all day. So uh, you went one and two last night but made that $80 because it was a three-star play on Northern Colorado. Uh, for February, you're eight and 10 and down 220 bucks. But overall, still looking great, 40 and 31, plus $1,140. So, Sean, lead us off, man. What you got? So we're going to go with UConn, minus four, for a two-star play tonight. <laughs> You're taking the fat Huskies? Oh, my goodness, I'm coming over the top. I kind of thought you would, and I hope you do, baby, because I got a lot of numbers there that I'm really loving tonight. Um, so then we're going to go with a Michigan State money line. I got it at minus 178. I think they have two back-to-back -back losses. They really need a win bad tonight. I'm going to go with a three-star play on that. Uh, Michigan State needs this win bad. Um, I feel like their season's on the line here about getting in the tournament. I mean, they could win the Big Ten and get in, but I think for sure they got to win tonight. Maryland, man, you know. Not good on the road. Not good on the won, road. They've won a few games in a row, but give me Michigan State money line. I don't want to mess with that line. Um, I'm going to go NC State tonight, plus seven and a half. And I'm going to go with a double on one, too, baby. I'm going to go with a three star play on that one. <laughs> I'm feeling good tonight, boys. I'm feeling good tonight. Uh, I'm going to take Cincy plus one and a half for a one star play. So, what, what do I got there? God, I'm scared, Sean. We have a lot of the same action tonight. A lot of the Don't same action. Don't be scared, baby. Don't be scared. We got NC State, UConn, Western Michigan. Michigan State. State. Uh, I want Western Michigan as well, plus three and a half uh, for a two-star play. So Don't I got. Be Don't be scared about NC State. I'm going with you on NC State. Don't be scared about that one. So what do you got? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And that, I did want to mention that uh, there is going to be $16 billion bet on the Super Bowl this year. So um, if you feel like you're a small man in the world, think about that. $16 billion will be bet on this Super Bowl. Um, that's a shit ton of money, and I just cannot believe it. I cannot believe I, that much money bet on one game. That's how much I'm up right now, right? Right there? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Point to us. There you go. To, to, the, to the domesticated dad, it feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. All right, so the action's in for Sean. My God, now I'm scared. I, I, you said don't be scared, dude. I got a lot of the same bets as you, and I had a couple leans as well that I, I made. I may make into bets. We'll, we'll see as we go along here. This is the benefit of going last. You get to go here with the other guys, hear their analysis, see if maybe my, you know, what I was thinking is on point with where. Where you guys were thinking so let's see where tito's at tito's at uh juiced out tito do you know what that means that you juiced out on your two plays last night that means you went one and one you split your bet so the only thing you lost was the juice so for okay. you because it was uh three star plays you lost 30 dollars of juice i don't know That's what it. juice mean. i don't know what juice means but okay. so the juice the juice is like if you were just betting or betting betting me and say you wanted marquette tonight plus four i wanted uconn minus four we would just bet a hundred bucks straight up. There's no juice, but because the books, you know, got to get the, get, get their profits. They make you lay minus minus one ten. So the extra $10 is what we call the juice. Okay. All right. Make that's, that's, how, that's how they make, that's how Vegas stays alive. Yeah. If there was no juice, there would be no casinos. Like so you that, can that's how figure of that $16 billion, 10%. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. right there. So, okay. So right. Tito, you, you juiced out. You lost thirty bucks last night uh, on those two plays. Won the three star in KU, lost the three star in Weber State. Thank God for my bankroll. 
Uh, Patino still looking great, man. Five and three oh, yeah. for the month, plus five hundred thirty dollars in first place again for the month, and of course first place overall, twenty one and twelve, plus two thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. What you got, bud? Yeah. So again, we're gonna go to the Big East. We're gonna go right up against Sean. We're gonna go to UConn. You know, Danny Hurley's still a fraud of a coach. Doesn't know what he's doing. Marquette. Uh, they're getting four and a half, according to what I'm seeing here. You know, I'm also going to take the over on that, 147, 147 and a half. Uh, they're both two-star plays. Marquette still needs to hold firm, do exactly what Xavier did a couple weeks ago, uh, go and take care of business. They're both Xavier and Marquette are, are top dogs in the Big East. They, need to, they want to still be the big dog. So uh, they need to both go, you know, they need to go in and do what Xavier did a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think I think UConn's fraud. Uh, don't like their play at home, and so love the over to start playing the over and the four and a half that Marquette's getting going to get going to take both those plays. Then ACC action, NC State. They're getting seven and a half against Virginia. Uh, like NC State with the minus seven, we're getting seven and a half. So we're going to make that a two star play as well. I also love the under on this play. I think the under Virginia is a really solid defensive team. Um, I think the under is 133 and a half. And so Virginia doesn't typically give up more than 70 points a game. And they don't usually score that much. So um, I like that play, the under on that. Um, I'm expecting maybe a 60, you know, 65, 60 type game. Um, and again, I, I, I don't think that NC State's going to beat them outright, but I like getting the seven and a half points. So both of those are two star plays as well. Tito, I love the analysis, man. Like, even if those lose, those are very well thought out plays. You're yeah, all grown I, up and you're all grown up, Tito. Look at you. I like it. Yeah, looking at the, I mean, looking at NC State, they're only, uh, you know, they're only a game back of the top spot in the league. And I think Virginia is a half game back. So NC State pulls off the miracle. Then they're right there for the top spot in the ACC. And that's up for grabs. You know, Sean, Prove what a fraud he was yesterday going with Duke and getting annihilated. Jimmy Laranaga in Miami just taking them to pound town. So um, ACC is totally up for grabs right now. Man, oh, man. Okay, man, I got some decisions to make here. Uh, I juiced out last night as well. Thank God I upgraded that Northern Colorado play to two stars. Yes. Uh, so I went I went one and two last night, but only lost 35 bucks. Uh, for the month of nine and 10, down $632. Overall, 31 and 25, only down 248. So hopefully I can get back in the green tonight. I got a pretty good amount of action. Uh, college Hoops, all one-star plays. UConn, I was on them too, minus four. Um, Tito, I get we, me and Sean both got you last night. Maybe it's time for you to come back at us tonight. But UConn was the very first play I saw today. Then I'm like, okay, but I know I want the Huskies tonight. So uh, these are all one-star. I'm also on Sparty. Uh, I'm taking the minus three and a half. At Caesars, I really love that play. Um, just be, exactly what you said, Sean. Michigan State needs this bad. Maryland yeah. doesn't need it that bad. And it's Tommy Izzo time, baby. Like, it's yeah. – they, they're it's right a rigatoni special. It is a rigatoni special, and they're squarely on the bubble right now. They need to yeah. take care of business at home when they can. Uh, I'm going to keep it one star because I'm really going to be pissed if Michigan State wins by three or less. And, and I lose stars and you win. But I, I, I think Sparty wins comfortably tonight. Uh, I just, I, I'm going to keep it one star. Yeah, keep it one star. Um, I had also had leans on Cincinnati and NC State. After hearing your boy, you, I like cheering with you boys. So I'm going to hop on it as well. Uh, I'm going to take the Bearcats at the plus one and a half. And let's do the Wolfpack at plus seven and a half. Um, those are also one stars. And then three more in college hoops. Ole Miss plus two on points bet. Uh, Georgia's best player likely out with a concussion. They're ter they're not very good with him and without him. And Ole Miss is bad too. But uh, Sharps all over are all over this one. Uh, Ole Miss plus two. Uh, really like A and M tonight. Texas A and M minus three at DraftKings. And I think it's a great bounce back spot for Kansas State as well. Uh, they're minus five at, at most books. So I'm going to take Kansas State minus five against TCU. TCU's got all kinds of injury concerns right now as well. You may maybe not aware of that, Tito, but the, the TCU's got big time injury concerns right now. Uh, so that's my college hoops. Two NHL plays in the same game tonight, courtesy of Godson Ty. We are uh, going 
You right. learned, and now you're going back to the well. You got to so, fade this guy. God sent Ty gave me three plays tonight. The first one, I'm like, I don't agree with this one. I, I don't I don't like the, the look of that, but I really like this one. The Oilers have been an over machine all year. Of course, they effed me over on the three-star play. So I'm just doing one star on this. I got Oilers and Wingy Wingy over six and a half and minus 120 at Caesars. I think the Oilers might beat the hell out of them. Uh, so in case they do, when it doesn't go over six and a half, I'm going to do a half star on Oilers minus one and a half. That's at plus 145 on DraftKings. So it wouldn't make all my money back if the over doesn't cash, but um, I would make a good chunk of it back. And then, um, sorry, I'm rambling on a little bit, but I'm going to give out a few Super Bowl props now because I just, I feel like these could move pretty quickly and I just don't want to wait and lose the value. So Sean, I'm going to hop on that play with you about the opening kickoff. Uh, I'm going no on a touchback as well for plus 150, two-star play. I looked into this a little bit more. So Butker has played in two Super Bowls previously. Uh, he had the opening kickoff in one of those games. It was not a touchback. Uh, then Elliott was the kicker for the Eagles when they beat the Patriots a few years ago in the Super Bowl. Uh, Elliott did not have the opening kickoff, but on his first kickoff later in the game, not a touchback. So, and you know, maybe a little bit of the nerves there, what have you. Either way, uh, that data that you have about the ball being different on the opening kickoff as well. I think anything of plus money is great value. And plus 150, yes, please. Two right. star play. Um, another, oh, yeah, Tito, go ahead. Give me the, give me the touchback and give me the points. Three star lock touchback. This bony crap that you guys are talking about with a weighted ball, different ball. These kickers don't kick it far. Get out of here with this crap. Touchback, three star play. I don't know what it is uh, for yes. I'm, I'm going to look that up. If I can't find it during the show, I'll, I'll make sure I let you guys know and post it uh, afterwards. Um, other props I really like. Um, first team to use a timeout in the game. I'm taking Kansas City for a two-star play at minus 115 on BetMGM. This is not a coin flip. This is There's data behind this. This is another Sean Kerner special. So the Eagles called the first timeout in only seven of their 19 games this season. The Chiefs did it 15 times in their 19 games, and 12 of those were of the Mike Martz wasted timeout variety where you just have a crappy play call and you just you know call a timeout just because. It's not like saving the, you know, the clock at the end of the first half. So I really like that play. I'm doing two stars in that one. Uh, and then three quickies, uh, one-star plays. Uh, Pacheco to catch a pass before Miles Sanders. Minus 130 on DraftKings. Which team will have the longest gross punt? I'm going Chiefs, minus 155 on DraftKings. And Dallas Goddard, over 18 and a half yards for his longest reception, minus 108 on FanDuel. So those are my plays for today. Uh, guys, what other? What else do you have? What, what comments, reactions, sarcastic remarks do you have? I'm going to add another star to that UConn play and go with a three-star play. Wow, wow, and wow. Yeah, so um, I love those props, Eric. Um, I, I'm probably going to jump on that game well again, but I know his line has jumped up a lot, the yardage on receiving yards. But this guy, he's been he's been huge for the Eagles. The only thing I would say about the play with the timeout is the Eagles didn't play anyone, so they didn't need to call a timeout. They played a week soft schedule. They were pretty much dominating every game script. So – they're going to be playing the Chiefs. You know, Hurts, first Super Bowl, they get the ball, they're down seven. They might need T.O. early, baby. They uh, might need it. This isn't they college basketball. It. Teams don't take timeouts <laughs> to break momentum in football. They they call timeouts hey. either to in the final two minutes of the half or they got a bad play call. I, just, I don't think he's going to see any coverages that Spag's going to bring the house, baby. So they might – give me a timeout. I, I got I to gotta readjust here. I could see that one going sideways on you. I like the reasoning, but I can see why the Eagles didn't. They didn't play anyone all year. That's why they didn't call any timeouts. They probably kept them all game. This new head coach doesn't know what he's doing. Um, so I, that's the only one I don't. I kind of question. You want Philly? Come at me. You can get a minus one fifteen. Same odds. Nah, nah, nah. I can't. <laughs> all right, Tito, give me a hot take. I'm trying to stall so I can find this uh, touchback odds. Mahomes is a fraud. Every time he does this, 
Give me a play call. Give me a play call, Daddy. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Give me a play call. Whoop it around. No one's talking about this hurt ankle anymore. It was apparently broken six weeks ago. Now all of a sudden it's healed? What the fuck? This is a bunch of fraud bullshit. I don't even care about Mahomes. I'm going with the Chiefs. It was a three-star play last week. I had my play before all you clowns. Everyone needs to recognize Tito knows what he's talking about. You guys don't know anything about sports. Good stalling because I found the odds. Yes, is at minus 150. You want to lay minus 150? Minus 150, three-star play, touchback. So right now uh, on the Super Bowl, we have Kansas City is taking 40% of the bets, 39% of the money. Uh, so everyone's on the Eagles right now. So yeah, um, I, I just don't know. I don't understand. If the Chiefs get ahead of this game and they get out to an early lead, What's Hurts going to do? Because he looks terrible throwing the ball downfield. He just looked terrible against the Niners. Uh, this is one that if I'm watching the game live and I see Kansas City get up 10 nothing, I'm going to hammer this game. I'm going to hammer Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah, well, do we, I guess we should remind people, you guys already have your bets in on the side for the Super Bowl. You're both on Kansas City money line for a three-star play at plus 110. I have not made a bet on the side yet. I think the money lines – I'm leaning Kansas City – Money line's currently plus 105. I usually have so much props. To me, the side is kind of a toss-up. I, I probably won't even bet the side, actually. Like, maybe I'll put one star on it just to root with you guys, but, like, I just think there's Stop so much more value. What, what's that? Stop arguing with yourself. I'm sorry, calling you Sean. Oh, I'm not going to bet it. I'm just going to watch it and enjoy my other game Friday. Oh, I got an 18-million star play, and here it is. I can't wait week for week one of the NFL so I have a full slate and I can really take advantage of these three star plays. Yeah, I'm gonna say, Sean, like you're already, you know, up about what, ten units, eleven units, whatever it is. And we barely had any NFL. So if you can keep this up and then we get to September and you're still up a, a decent amount, man, you can really crush it here uh, uh, towards the end of twenty twenty three. Yeah, I'm excited. I am very excited. All right, All right. boys. Good show right. today. Good Take uh, four days in the dark to figure out if he will be coming back to Green Bay. Wolfman, get out of here with this crap. So, this uh, guy needs to leave us all alone. Handicap, he, he fraud handicapper too. Oh, I, I don't have a play. I'm trying to play Green Bay in January. I'm trying to post scores. What a fraud this guy is with the with the golf tournament this weekend. I just want to win. And then he's going to take 18 hours or 18 days to be in pitch black. Get the hell out of here with this. Hey, look. Tito can do the same thing, Rogers. Oh, look at me. I'm in pitch black, too. Oh, you can't see me. Whoa. What a bunch of fraud. Terrible guy. Get out of my life, Aaron Rodgers, fraud. I tell you what. It's a crap. I, I think I speak for most Packer fans, and we're done. Uh, we're ready for some new blood. Uh, go ahead and go to the Raiders. See how it goes. Uh, Let's get Jordan Love in here and let's just change it up. We need a new face. He needs to move on too, I think. Yeah, it's it's been time. It's over. I think it's time. It's kind of like when you're, you know, in a relationship in high school and you're getting ready to move off to college. Don't yeah. don't go to college with a girlfriend from high school. Break it off. It's time to move on. It's time to start a new era in your life. I think that's where the Packers are at now. I mean, if you got to go sit in the dark for four days to figure out if you need to come back, you're not no. coming back. You're hey, he back. just he just learned from his predecessor once all the attention in the world, just like Brett Favre did when he retired three different times. I effing hate that guy. I, we, we need to argue about this on a different show, but I, I remember Dan just like, Rogers, you shouldn't leave. He's getting paid like $90 million by the Packers. No reason the Packers want him gone. They didn't make the playoffs this year. It doesn't work the investment anymore. The years before, he was an MVP playoff guy. Now he's not. He's a fraud. Complete embarrassment. Get him out of here. Get him out of my life. McAfee, I don't want to watch your show anymore because you have him on right on this platform. A bullshit nonsense. Whoa. Oh. First ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. No no question. No question. But Terrible I, I... Take. No first ballot Hall of Famer should be disqualified for his ignorant statements, his blackout. Get out of here. You know what's funny is Tom Brady even did the unretirement. What's up with these guys? Just, just get go away when it's done. Go away. Do you think Brady's done, or do you think there's a chance he can? Oh, back? he's done. He talked about he's coming back in 24 in the broadcast booth. Okay. He's getting paid more doing the broadcast thing than he did his entire career playing football. Of course, he's gonna he's gonna they're gonna do it right. He's gonna be an awesome analyst. He's gonna take some classes. 
He's going to do some hot take videos. He's going to learn from Tito's hot toilet takes. I've already been in communication with him. He's going to be on top of the world after watching my takes and seeing my coaching from him. Did you guys see on uh, eBay someone was selling the sand where he was sitting at for 90000 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, you got to shoot the score, right? Like, I, oh. I just – reading his body language from that uh, – you know, that presser or whatever he gave selfie video, he seemed done to me. I'm really surprised that Fox gave him all that money. Tito said he's going to go take classes. You're really going to pay that much money. The guy needs to go take classes at, at broadcasting school. I feel like the shine is kind of worn off on Tony Romo right now. Brady might be a disaster from the beginning, man. Like I, nah, I, I just don't know. Right, that's why they're going the year. They're going to give him a year to kind talk of, about it on Cowherd, how he's going to, he's going to prepare. For it. He's going to take some classes, I'm sure. and He's going to get coached up, and he's going to be phenomenal. He's Tom Brady. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I got domesticated duties I got to get to, so I'm going to wrap this puppy up. Uh, please hit that like button on your way out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, also post a comment on our videos, and we can chat with you there. And hit that notification bell, too, so you can get our videos as soon as we post them. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Gambling Dads. So that's where I track all of our plays and recap our records. I'll have a lot of work to do tonight because we got a lot of action tonight, boys, all right? Uh, remember that we want to grow this show, so we appreciate your support. Uh, please share it with your friends and family, and we'll continue to crank out a show for you each and every weekday. For Sean, for Tito, I'm Eric. This has been Domesticated Gamblers. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's cash.